Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I did the pausing thing. I gotta figure out what's going on there. Hello. Welcome back to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the commentary section of the show. If you missed the previous show, we were talking about this. I'm going to do my best van and I'm sure in, impression. It's uh, the 100 to 400 millimeter Leica lens for the Lumix camera on a GH5 with the BG GH5 battery pack. We'll put links to all this stuff down below. And um, yeah, it's a hell of a combination right there. Obviously, we are no longer in the tiny little lightweight mirrorless realm, but uh, I mean, still mirrorless. It's still lightweight compared to compared to full mirrored size cameras that do the same thing. But anyway, so uh, this is the commentary section. We are trying to address any questions you might have about any photo topic that you want to ask. Let's see what we can do. There was one that came up earlier, so I'll start with that. Michael Siebke says for, for the commentary section, is it possible to create a video from a time lapse shooting later? You had to replace the battery first. Manuel says yes, but I didn't manage to do it. So he's asking, can you, if you shot a time lapse on the camera, Lumix, this is any Lumix camera does this, shot a time lapse on it, and for whatever reason you stopped, you shut it down, you swapped out the battery, uh, whatever it may be, and you didn't get that automatic message that pops up that says, do you want to create a video now? Or if that message popped up and you said no, and then you went, actually, I do want to make a video now. Can you do it? Yes, you can. I actually cover that. <laughs> oh, look at that. I get to throw another plug already. I actually covered that quite nicely in this video, ghtrytraining.com, so you can go check that out there, although that I don't think that video is published yet. It might be. I know I recorded it. I don't remember if it's published yet. But yes, you can. You go into the play menu and, okay, now I got to try and get this thing to work because now we're going to have quite the kind of questions that we want on here. So let me get my GH5 hooked up to the switcher. You know what? That might be easier. No, I'll just use this. Uh, I don't know why it didn't work before. I kind of think I might know, but uh, I will show you. Go into the play menu and then from the play menu, you can, you can access it. So let's go to get this out of this mode. Go into... Where is my Wi-Fi? Uh, so my, my HDMI settings on here. Record output. Info display is on. Down convert. Uh, down convert off. That would be the problem. That's why it wasn't working earlier. Cause the switcher can't handle the 4K. Uh, there we go. Now we got the screen up. So let's go to this. That's it. Okay. So I don't have a time lapse in here right now. But if you go to the play and then you, oh crap, is that gonna? TV output in progress. Okay, there it goes. And you go into the play menu and then you see this time lapse video. From here, now it's looking for time lapse, but it can't find any. But at that point, you would be able to access your time lapses that you previously shot. It would just find them automatically and, um, and allow you to build them. So that's, that's where you gotta go. You go into the play menu to access that. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, <laughs> I missed this comment before. Martin says, you saw ostriches in South Africa, massive birds. Oh, I thought, they are massive birds. I thought I said massive butts, they, that too. I'm going blind. Um, <laughs> just simply, Brendan is clarifying that it was the African crowned crane. No, I disagree. That was unequivocally a crazy chicken. What he's talking about is this guy right here. This, my friends, is not an African crowned crane. This is a crazy chicken. I'm just saying, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> this is a beautiful bird. This is an incredible bird, honestly, beautiful, but a little on the crazy side. Definitely a little on the crazy side. All right, um, Fake Cubes, this is really is the perfect wildlife lens and camera combination. Talking about this, I don't care what anyone says. It's small and light enough that you won't get tired hiking with it and extremely capable. Well, that, that it all definitely is. All right, let me scroll down. So remember, if you got any comments, now's the time to, to throw them out there. Oh, Michael saying, ah, oh, thanks, responded to that. I was trying from the play screen while displaying the stack of photos, not the play setup. Yeah, that's, that's the trick. Just go hit that play setup, go into there, and uh, yeah, it should sort it out. Uh, Oxharp, uh, Oxharp, you might have just missed it. I just covered this, but I will do it again. Oxharp is asking, can I get a quick update on the GH5 guide, please? So you are, of course, talking about this beautiful guide right there, gh5training.com. Yes, you can get an update on it. In fact, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the progress of this thing. Um, where is that? That is in the cloud. That is, where is my spreadsheet for that? Um, I think it would be right on top. Oh, there it is. Sort by date, it's right on top. I want to show you. I'm going to share with you guys. The We're going to open the kimono here as it will show you how this is coming together. So this is the spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet that I built for building this video. So GH5 training, you see introduction. Introduction, incidentally, comes last. I record the intro last because, because people have gone, where's the intro? I record the intro last because I've, I change what I'm recording. Like I wrote the outline for what I'm going to do. And that has evolved over time. I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to put, oh, I didn't include that. I want to make sure to do that. That doesn't really matter anymore. I kind of covered it there, so I'm going to remove it. So it changes, right? And I don't know 
everything that's going to happen before it happens. So the intro actually gets recorded at the end. And in the intro, I can say, in this video, you're going to learn how to do this. And we're going to talk about that. And, here, so, and that's just something I do at the end. So that is the last video to get recorded, the intro and outro pairing. Plus, just as a little side, as a little interesting uh, tidbit for how these things go, I don't teleprompt. I don't use teleprompter for any of this. I, um, I just make it up as I go. It's not that bad, honestly. It's all planned out, but I don't teleprompt it. I know what I'm going to say, but I don't, you know, have the words in front of me, which makes it fun for the editor because I'm talking and I'm like, um, but uh, but but uh, and he has to edit around that. There's actually a really fun piece where we're talking about 4K, shooting 4K for HD delivery, where I deliberately made a mistake in the recording so that the editor could show you the difference between editing around that when you do and you don't have the 4K push. It's going to be, it's fun. There's some fun stuff in here. I hope you get it. It's, I like it. Um, anyway... Whew, talk about off topic. Um, here's, here's what's going on. So we got the exploring the GH5 body done. GH5 camera basics done. One video that I might reshoot. I need to go back and check that out. Um, oh, that one's done. I recorded that. So I might reshoot this one. Probably not, though. I got to go back and look at it again. I need to shoot some just insert footage there. So the alternate uh, shooting modes is done. GH5 menu is done. Autofocus system is done. I just need to get some shots that I can add in for the editor that's not me on camera. This is stuff I need to go shoot. I will do that this week. GH5 video fundamentals done. The vlog upgrade, that's the one that is not yet done because I'm, I'm just conferring exactly how I'm going to describe this. Capturing audio on the GH5 done. Customizing your GH5 camera done. Wireless functions done. This was so much fun to do. This was a really fun one to shoot, so that's all done. So everything except for that Luix, that GH5 upgrade one. Then you can see the editing progress, and this is, honestly, he's farther along than this. He just hasn't updated the spreadsheet. There are a lot more, there should be a lot more green check marks in there. But editing and finished, and then over here you can see the ones that are uploaded, which are just a few that have been uploaded, but the more are coming. So there's, there's a lot of work still to do, but we are making beautiful, wonderful progress on this, and I am, I'm super happy with it, super proud of it. So, uh... We're not going to make it by the end of this month. That's pretty clear right now. Probably a couple more weeks. I am going to finish. I'm going to shoot that last uh, um, the vlog video this week, 100%. I'm shooting that this week. So I will be done shooting before the weekend. And then from there on, it's all into uh, the final bits of editing. So I hope, I hope that that uh, is interesting and helpful to those of you who are wondering where it is at. All righty, Curdy says, what do you think about the Panasonic Leica DG Noctuan 42.5 millimeter f1.2? Oh my God, that is like my favorite lens. Okay, my, my number one most used lens is going to be the 15 mil. And then one of my like really tied for a close second favorite is the this one here, the non-Lumix, this 25 millimeter f0.95 Zhongyi lens. Love this guy. We'll link to all these down below. So love this lens. Love the 15 mil. But that Noctocron is gorgeous. That is obviously my go-to portrait lens. If that, if I need that focal length, then even if I have the zoom already on there, I'm going to go for that lens. It's so sharp. It is such great, beautiful bokeh. It is. Oh, it's not cheap. It's not a cheap lens, but it's uh, it's very very nice. So I absolutely adore that lens. Um, when I travel, I've, I did a travel. Here, let's link to that up here. When I, I did a travel video. Uh, week, two weeks ago, kind of what you need when you travel. And I went through a variety of options. For me personally, that Noctocron, even though it becomes the biggest lens in my travel bag, it pretty much always goes with me on a trip. It's just too nice to leave behind. It really is. Eddie Nataray says, for some reason, I feel like the photos I take at 200 millimeter plus just have different attractive quality to them. Oh, that you really like. Okay, a different attractive quality that you really like. Do you have any insight into why that might be? So photos you take at 200 Plus, so on the 100 400 lens, the 200 more have a different quality to them. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I would imagine, that obviously, the bokeh is going to have something to do with it. But uh, other than that, I really, I couldn't say. It would be interesting to see, is it, is there a hard line? Like at 199 millimeter, it isn't, and then you hit 200 and something happens? That would be very interesting to know. Is it a progressive thing at 100 and then 200 and then 300? It's getting progressively better. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But feel free to, if you can think some more about that, maybe have some more insight into what you're, why you're, or what you're experiencing, feel free to add that to a comment to this video later, and, uh, and I'll take a look at it, and I'll see if I can get, get you any kind of answers. Uh, John Warby saying, great setup. It weighs less than my old EOS 60D and 70 to 200. This, yeah, right? It it's really is. It's l so lightweight when compared to other, other, even nowhere near this scope gear. Just simply, Brandon says, do you plan on trying out Panasonic's adapters for Leica M lenses like the Noctilux? Panasonic make adapters for that? News to me. Um, I hadn't. 
I, someone would have to get me some old Leica M lenses. <laughs> if you got a Leica M lens you want me to test, I'll check it out. I'm not going to go out and buy any of those, though. Those are expensive. But uh, I had no plans to. It's an interesting thing. I'll have to, I'll have to, care, uh, I'll have to look into that a little bit. Tuba, di, tuba, tuba Dylan. Oh, sorry. It's like... Anyway, Tuba Dylan says, I just ordered the GH5 course. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm very well organized. Well, you, you got to be when you got a course that big. Yeah, definitely. You can tell he's a professional. Let's not get carried away. Easy on the professional. No name calling here. Burns Tech says, I'm going to buy this course. Thank you. So I can get the most out of this camera, at least for how I use it. Also, also to help support you. Well, thank you, Mr. Burns Tech. I do appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> That's awesome because I need all the support I can get. Michael Simmons says, how do you feel about the Vedra Mini Primes for video? I have not used them at all. So I do not have a feeling nor an opinion about them. I've heard nice things, but I have not tried them at all. Uh, Tuba Dylan says the Nocturne and the 15 are my two favorite lenses as well. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, when I did the little, the little travel roundup, the 15, the 25 and the 42 and a half Nocturne, those are the three, like those three out. I'm good. i take those, take those in the GX 85 for travel photography. Mwah, perfect. Done. And the GX 85 shoots amazing video as well. You just don't get you know, 4K 60p, you don't get the 1080p 180 frame per second. You don't get the audio input, but if you don't need that, then that is a phenomenal camera for video. Looks great. So I shot all the Mexico stuff on. Uh, let's see here. Wayne is asking, do I have any old Canon FD lenses? Uh, FD, what does the FD mean? I have a lot of old Canon lenses. I have the red straw. I, I never sold off my Canon stuff except for the 400 mil. That was just too much money sitting in a case. Uh, but I still have, I've got, you know, the 50 mil one, two. I've got um, 70 to 200 at four. I've got a 15 mil fisheye, 24 to 70 to eight. Um, what 100 mil macro? What else is up there? Um, I think I'm missing something. It's got to be at least another lens or two in there. Oh, the 85 one too. Nice lens. Got that still. Anyway, so yes, I do have a lot of that gear. Um, I don't know if that's what you mean by the FD lenses though. I just I don't remember that term. It sounds vaguely familiar. Something in the back of my head, but I don't remember. All righty. Oops. Uh, scrolled off. Where do we go? Uh, Joshua says, I'm on a tight budget under a fair enough. <laughs> so am I, but looking to get a monitor. I've discovered there's monitor resolution and supported resolution. Must I get a monitor that supports 4k 24 FPS if that's what I record at? Ah, okay. That is a really good question. No. So he's asking, it, he's going to record internally 4k 24 P. Does the monitor have to support 4K 24P? It does not. So in the camera, let me see if I can get this up. This is one of those kind of tricky things to get to show, I think. Um, let's see here. Is that up? That's up. If you go into your HDMI record output settings, down convert, you can set it to auto or fix it into something. So you would go to 1080p. So in, as long as the monitor that you're getting supports 1080p, and that doesn't even mean that it has to be a 1080p monitor. I did a video a while ago, we'll link to that up here, um, that was on a super cheap LCD display. And I totally ripped off the video from another YouTuber, but I credit him, so good for that. Uh, because I bought one myself and I figured I you know, may as well do a video on it. And it was like 50 bucks or something. It's a crap display, don't get me wrong. You have to be straight onto it. If you get off angle at all, the exposure changes, so you can't use it for judging exposure, but you can use it for judging composition, even sharpness, especially with focus peaking turned on. And it is sub 1080p. The display itself is probably 960 pixels wide, but it does take in a 1080p signal. So I can hook that up to any camera, any Lumix camera, even shooting 4K and output 1080p. Now that particular display does work at, let me think about this. It, even if I'm shooting at 24, I think I still get a display out at, that it'll, it'll read, pretty sure. That, that is the one area where you might get into a weird thing because the camera is going to output at the same frame rate that it's recording. So if you're shooting at 60, at 30, at 24, that's what's going to output, even though it down the signal. Um, but I, as far as I recall, I was able to get that thing to work even at 24p. Sometimes I had to reboot it. it was, it's a weird, crappy little display, but it works. It works. So, but the basic answer to the question is no. Your external monitor does not have to support the same resolution that you're shooting at. Just go into the HDMI record outputs and enable that down resing so you down res it to whatever it is you need and um, and you'll be good to go now of course if you want to record externally then obviously it has to support that if you're going to record into a ninja or some other recording device then it has to support that but that's that's fairly obvious so there you go uh joshua hopefully that helps answer your question um 
All right, Ryan is helping Martin out, who is forgetting to uh, at photo just me. Martin, you got to do that. I'm struggling to get Boca to work on the Leica 12 to 60. I'm in A mode. Wrong lens or got something wrong. Okay, so Boca is all about your depth of field. How shallow? You're, or, well, it is depth of field, right? Just anybody's going, what's Boca? Like, Boca is that sh that fuzzy, blurry part of that's behind your subject, right? That's Boca, the part that's out of focus. Depth of field is how much is in focus at any given time, right? So if I shoot this. Right, if I take a pic, hello, there we go. If I'm shooting with this camera, taking a picture of this, depth of field might be this much, that much is sharp, and then everything else out of focus, it might be this much, it might be this much, and so on and so on and so on. The bigger your depth of field, right, the less bokeh you have. For any given depth of field, let's just say that I got this much depth of field. If I've got a subject, another subject here, it's barely out of focus, right? So that it's not gonna have a really nice bokeh. If I take that same background and it's way over there, it's gonna be much softer. Now, the lens that you've got, whatever your aperture is, you want if you want the most depth of field, you shoot wide open. So on the Leica 12 to 60, it is a variable 2, 8 to 4. Is that right? 2, 8 to 5, 2, 8, whatever it is. 4 to 5, whatever the hell it is. Um, 2 to something. That, when you're zoomed in, you have a less, you don't have as, as big of an aperture, so you have less of a bokeh if you, as if it was a f2.8 all the way through, a fixed f2.8, or if it was an f2 or f1.7 or whatever. If you, want, if you want the most bokeh possible from your lens, definitely shoot wide open. That's number one. You always got to shoot wide open. Put as much different distance between your foreground and your background, your subject and your background. And the closer you can get to your subject, fill the frame with your subject at that wide open focal length, at that wide open aperture, then more distance, the more relative distance you'll have to, your, to the background, right? So if I've got, does that make sense? So if I've got, I need more props here. Um, okay, so this is better. Ooh, something big. All right, so let's say this is my background, this is my subject, this is my camera. If I can't change these distances here, if I shoot from here, can you even see that? Yeah, if I shoot from here, the background is going to be more in focus than if I shoot from here. Now, obviously, depending on the lens, you may not be able to get that close, focal length might work, and so on. But as a general rule, if you can get close to your subject, the, the difference between the distance between the camera and your subject and the camera to the background matters when it comes to your shell, to your bokeh. So those are some things that you can consider, you can think about when, uh, when setting up your shot. Uh, if your shot, if you're doing all of that and you're still not getting the depth of field that you want, then you need a lens with a larger aperture, and that's just physics. Alrighty, uh, Bart Johnson says, did you hear the news that Lexar SD cards are being discontinued? The parent company is shutting them down? What? Are you kidding me? I had not heard that news as you might be able to tell from my reaction. Huh, interesting, all right. All right, well, uh, no, I hadn't. Ryan just told me he's pulling up that link um, and he's gonna paste it in as soon as the keyboard starts working again. Hey, remember all the keyboard problems I was complaining about? I found the problem. At least I did until today. It turns out my Wi-Fi printer was causing interference. I turned off the Wi-Fi printer, the problems went away. For weeks, the problem's been gone. Till today, now they're back. My Wi-Fi printer's not only off, it's unplugged. I'm so confused. <sighs> anyway, um, Eddie says, oops, ah, comments flying off. Eddie says, are there any viable options for Micro Four Thirds astrophotography? That question's come up a few times, Eddie. I don't, I don't know. I don't shoot astrophotography. I don't know why there wouldn't be, you know, you've got, better low noise performance on a bigger sensor. That's just, again, physics. So if you have to shoot really high ISO, then you might want something with a bigger sensor. But I don't think there's any reason that you can't shoot astral photography with one of these cameras. Now there's not a dedicated, I know that, is it Canon? Nikon, somebody makes a camera that really is kind of designed for it, and I have no idea what the difference is, but something about the sensor is different, optimized for astral photography. There's nothing like that in the Micro Four Thirds world as far as, far as I know, but, um, other than those custom options, custom hardware options, I don't think there's any reason that you can't shoot astral photography with these cameras. Um, I, I really don't. So if you're talking about lens choice, I mean, you've got lenses all over the map. You have every lens focal length you could really want. So um, it, it, expand on the question if you'd like. If I haven't answered it for you, I'll, I'll be happy to try and get, get more info to you. Uh, let's see here. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Ryan, there's that. Or, uh, Ryan, there's the article. Let's open that up here. Rest in peace, Lexar. Wow, let's zoom this in a little. What the heck? Oh, ads. Got you guys, seriously. Um, can we make that a little bigger? There we go. 
Rest in peace. If you're a fan of Lexar memory cards and your cameras, there's some sad news for you today. They're being discontinued. Micron, the parent company, is announcing that the entire Lexar removal storage retail business is being shuttered. That's insane. That's like one of the most popular, there's not that many manufacturers out there that make cards. Wow. Huh, very interesting. Well, God. Definitely news to me. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that. I might have to, you know, think, put some more thought into that. Uh, Burns Texas, quick question: When I order the GH5 training course, there there are mine are they mine to keep forever? No distribution, of course, or do they expire? Oh yeah, no, those are yours to download. This is the advantage of buying the course. If you buy the course from me, you download them; they're yours. Um, you know, like any video you buy, you're technically licensing the the use of that video for personal use but indefinitely. Um, it doesn't expire. It's not like if you're, if your other option, and I always want to point this out, your other option for the GH5 training course is to watch it on lynda.com. This will be available on Lynda, but of course not until it's completed and they've had their QA round, which could take a couple of weeks. So once they get it, a couple more weeks and then it'll be up. Um, if you're watching it on Lynda, you have to pay a monthly subscription and you're only able to access it as long as you're a monthly subscriber. If it's the kind of course that you just want to have a copy of that you can reference anytime, forever and ever, without having to pay additional funds for it, then yes, please do purchase it for me and then you'll be able to download it and you have it. And obviously, as as uh, Bernstein pointed out, you can't give it away. You can't sell it to somebody else. But yes, it is yours to use indefinitely. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. I feel like it was a loaded question just so I could talk about it more. In which case, if it was, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Michael Simmons says, is the BMPCC Blackmagic Cam worth the money? Okay, Blackmagic, the PCC, is that the Blackmagic something cinema camera, right? Blackmagic pocket cinema camera. That's what that is. Don't know. Haven't played with it. Um, ah, how much is it? Let's, let's take a look. Because I know that is a micro four thirds mount. Uh, let's see, I guess we don't need this page anymore. Let's see if I can find this thing. Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera. There it is. How much is this thing? Let's see here. $1,000 camera. Okay. Um, tiny, obviously. It shoots. This, what does this thing shoot? Is, it is, is this Super 16? But I thought it was a Super 16, but a Micro Four Thirds lens mount, right? Is that different then? I, at some point, I was thinking that Micro Four is a Super 16, but I've been I've been told, no, you idiot, that's not the case. Um, 13 stops dynamic range. That's what we get out of the GH5. Records to SD card, Cinema, DNG, RAW, and ProRes. Look, you should shoot straight to ProRes. That's kind of cool. Um, high resolution display, memory cards, removable battery, professional connections, metadata support. Interesting. It's an interesting camera. Um, I've never worked with one. It's it's obviously very compact. It's designed for a particular type of, of use. I, um, I don't know. I mean, I think I would prefer to shoot with a GH5 by, f yeah, auto, it doesn't talk about, I have no idea what the autofocus, maybe let's forget about autofocus, let's pretend it doesn't even have it. Um, it's It seems like it's, other than this, this line that's confusing me, super 16 size image sensor. Um, if anybody knows, is that actually a bigger sensor than what's in a micro four thirds? Is it not a micro four thirds sensor? I don't know. Which would be interesting how it crops the lens then. And if there's lenses you can't use because of vignetting. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And because of my relationship with Panasonic, I'm unlikely to do any type of a review on it, even though it is a Micro Four Thirds mount, just because that's kind of how we do things with the, as a luminary. Uh, I do own Blackmagic cameras, right? You're looking at one right now. I'm using here the Blackmagic Studio, Micro Studio. What's this thing called again? Micro Studio. I think that's it. Blackmagic really good at this searching thing and that's not it it's something anyway whatever i'm using one of those little cameras here for this because it's better for my broadcast stuff because the sdi output but um i don't know i, I really don't have a, a good answer for you so sorry about that uh brent says it's easy just to go to the space station totally let's go to the space station i know you're talking about uh brent says black magic supports and quality control is pathetic compared to panasonic well, they do have they do have interesting quality issues, don't they? they it seems like everything that's shipped ships in beta. I, I will say that. Um, but I do love the company. I have friends there, so I'm a little bit biased. In fact, my old boss from Apple now works there, so I'm biased. Um, and I do. I mean, I have a lot of their gear. One of the things with Blackmagic, I said this before, so this is no secret, is that when you buy Blackmagic gear, especially things like the switching, the broadcast stuff that I'm using, um, the price that you pay is a fraction of what you pay from other companies. It really is. And it usually works great. And if it doesn't work great, sometimes they go, oh, yeah, we haven't written that feature in yet. And you're like, really? Um, but the kind of catch, if you will, is you really need to use Blackmagic throughout. 
uh, for example, I'm using a, just record, I don't want to pick it up and stop the recording, but I'm using a recorder here that is recording this show. It's a Blackmagic recorder. I used to have it recorded into my Ninja. I had all kinds of problems with it. Um, and basically Blackmagic said, you know, don't use a Ninja, use ours, it works. Uh, and it's not because the Ninja doesn't work, it's because they just, they don't, they don't, um, they don't test with other stuff. They really test with their own. They make the entire, eco it's kind of like Apple, right? They make the entire ecosystem, so they really want you to buy other parts of their ecosystem. So my switcher is Blackmagic, my display here is Blackmagic, my recorder is Blackmagic, um, the camera is Blackmagic, and they all work together really, really nicely. So there's that. Um, tech support has gotten better though, I will say, and I don't know if it's just because I send them so many emails that now they kind of like, oh, it's that Joseph guy again, or, uh, or if it just has gotten better. But it, it used to complain a lot about their tech support, but it has gotten dramatically better over the last uh, year or so. Uh, Trevor's saying that people shoot feature films on the Pocket Camera. People shoot feature films on the GH5. So there you go. Um, Bart's saying the Pocket really needs an update. Well, there you go. There's that too. Okay. Uh, oh, Trevor's saying the crop factor on the BMPCC is 2.8. So it's not a 2x crop, it's a 2.8. Okay, just YouTube it. All right, well, I can't do that right now. Um, are they planning to do a upgrade? I have no idea what they're planning to do. Don't compare the Pocket to the GH5. They're not the same type of machine. Okay, fair enough. Then I will not. Uh, okay, that is the last question that rolled by here. Let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up. I think it's time to go. It's time for second breakfast. That much I know. All right, you guys, hey, this was fun. I, I hope you enjoyed looking at the pictures. I, I will be adjusting, treating those, and uh, posting some online. If you're not following me on Instagram already, do that. Just photo just on Instagram. I'll be posting some of those photos there. Um, maybe I'll start pushing them to 500px as well. I, I just, I never really use that. I probably should. It's kind of a fun place to do. And yeah, um, that's it. All right, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Fun having you around. I love the live Q&A part things later. And remember, tomorrow's show is another show. I have no idea what we're going to talk about yet, but we'll figure it out. That's it. See you later. Bye-bye.